What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Talk About Transformers. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a masterpiece figure because this is going to go up on Thanksgiving. So, my quote holiday specials, unquote, are just going to be me looking at a masterpiece for the time being. Uh, just so that way I can get them on there somewhere without taking over a Friday spot. Uh, start off with this guy. We'll take a look at his box because he is a masterpiece. I did keep the box. Let's see what happens when we zoom out. All right, so there's his box. Angle it up. Get you out of here. Spoilers for comparison. Alrighty, so here's his box, uh, DX9 higher, raise it up a little bit more, it's very faint up here at the top, but it says its size is matched with the MPM series, and it does look really good with some MPMs, as you'll see, side of the box, 03, uh, Kaleidoscope 03 higher. I'm not sure what 01 and 02 are, um, I know that People say that this is a collaboration with Unique Toys, which I would believe because it fits in really well with those. Uh, there's a bio. If you want to read it, there's a picture of his car mode. His spoilers bumped up. Um, he has side view mirrors. My figure does not because one got bent and ripped off, so I just cut them both off. Um, which is okay because I have Peru Kill also, and you can put his... Uh, side view mirrors on his shoulders in robot mode if you don't want him making the feet look weird I just took them off and put them back in the box so now both my Lamborghinis have no side view mirrors so they match this side of the box you've got kaleidoscope both three higher again with some sort of symbol there that I don't know the meaning of top of the box is a picture of the higher the bottom of the box you've got DX9 15 plus uh, made in China, uh, 2019, warnings and things of that nature. That's it for his box. Um, oops, wrong thing. Uh, real quick, we'll take a look at the instructions in their baggie, because I am not taking them out of the baggie because it's taped. Uh, DX9 apparently stands for Digital Extol, Crostol. Zizel DX9 toys though inner dream eternal hobby so they're like taking the dreams they want to see with the Transformers hobby and making them reality retain instructions for future use same thing on the back but it's got a white background the image is the same but this one it's just him and on the back you've got the car there so that's it for the instructions he comes with a few accessories, none of which store in car mode at all, uh, except for one, which is this little minifigure here of the lady. Um, now, I love numbers. I do math for fun, and I actually took the scale of the vehicle and the robot mode for this figure for the fictional character height, and I did some measurements on this toy, and I figured out that the robot and the vehicle are in scale with each other to uh, 0.03%. So they're basically spot on. She's too short for this car. She is not big enough. I think that uh, that might surprise some of you, but she's actually, she's not in the same percent scale as the car, but we'll take a look at her real quick. Instead of bringing it towards the camera, I'll bring the to camera towards her. She's got shoulder articulation, um, full 360, I think, yeah. She has little molded grippy hands, but there's nothing for them to grip. Her head doesn't spin. And then for leg articulation, you can go back that far, forward that far, no outward movement. And then she's just got a knee. And what you can do with her is you can actually open up the higher here. He's got the working suicide doors. And it's not like the most beautiful interior you've ever seen. But there are seats in there. So you can try your best to have her in the seat. We'll see if we can't get her in there. 
I've done next to nothing with this accessory since I've had this figure, so I think she's gonna be in there. Oh, all right, there. We'll get the door shut. So there is the lady in the car. Dang it. There we go. And so she's in there, and he rolls pretty well. Uh, we'll take a look. You can see where I have cut off the side view mirror. It was just... I like to play with my figures and I like to take them around with me and at some point it got caught on something and this one bent. I tried to glue it back on which is why this side is messier and it didn't stay on so I was just like you know what and it's gone now so uh, taking a look at the details uh, he's got orange highlights on the front uh, clear uh, wind not windshields headlights with silver back you got some molded in windshield wipers coming down the side you've got that orange stripe coming down there should also be one right here at the top of this window but this thing is so great that i'm not gonna nitpick too bad there is a little scuff here you'll notice that's from the way it transforms with the hood piece going and grading past it so that's just because i mean if you only transform yours like once and then turn it back to robot and put it on a shelf you probably won't have that issue in robot mode you're not going to see that at all but uh he comes packaged in vehicle mode by the way so you would have to transform it into the robot at least once if you were going to display it as a robot and it'd start to scuff away in the back the tail lights are just painted red on this really thin like rib here i'm not sure how accurate that is to the vehicle i want to say there should be orange back here but i couldn't tell you for sure this is loose on mine this flap i'm thinking about tightening it um and then you can take the spoiler and you can pull it up a little bit in car mode so that it's raised if you want um and but mostly you pull it up for transformation so it's kind of like a little bonus feature uh you can see in the wheels here the brake calipers and things are painted on the inside uh the front they have a molded there but i don't see any paint on them uh you've got door handles and uh most of the most of the lines from the transformation um don't stand out one because it's a pretty dark car it's uh it's i don't know if i would say it's black but it's pretty much the last step you get going from gunmetal to black and when i compare him to la Hire, or not la Hire, peru kill that's a much more of a gunmetal but this is like one step below black coming from gunmetal um, on the camera, it's probably just going to look black, but in person, it almost has a little bit of a gunmetal look to it, to me anyway. And you've got all the hood details. And then there's the bottom. Uh, I stuck an Autobot symbol on his head just because I had some and I wanted to stick some to some of my guys. Um, there are her legs. I was like, what is that? Uh, you can see he folds up pretty neat under here. He's got a little bit of scuffing on one of these, and I don't know if that's just from him rolling around on stuff or if I scuffed them in robot mode. Uh, and then you'll notice that I have the hands with the back of the, the hand facing down, and not a lot of people do that. Um, I started doing it because it helps this sit together better. I'm not sure if I'm gonna uh, fold them out, put them back in the orientation. Most people put them in and close it up, but this, that popped out when I was getting the lady in but this all stays together much better when the hands are facing down and they don't really hang down much lower than normal I'm gonna get her out of here she's just being shook around clip this back in uh, I did tighten his knees one the other day and one this morning so uh, we'll see how that goes because his knees uh, the road I guess it would be the thigh rotation that he has at his knees because he has one at the actual thigh uh it was getting loose so we'll put him back here this is pretty much it for vehicle mode and we'll take a look at some size comparisons with our rubik's cube with our gormagala statue We've got our beetle. It's 
So there you have him with the beetle. Um, I'm not sure if the size here is good or not. But there he is. Uh, here he is with the New Age Mista. Uh, Dark of the Moon Masterpiece Soundwave figure. Uh, which will get reviewed eventually. So there he is with a Masterpiece car. Um, that was just transformed for vehicle mode in the box. And here he is with the Peru Kill Lockdown. Uh, as you can see, I've taken his mirrors off too, so it doesn't look so awkward. And as you can see, he's much of a, more of a gunmetal, but this guy looks like he's a, a mixture of gunmetal and black to me in person. And then uh, this guy it becomes a much bigger robot than this guy does, even though the cars are s relatively similar in size. This is a little bit bigger. Which is funny, because I learned in, in the actual scale of the vehicles, this one should be a little smaller. But I was like, oh, it makes sense. Lockdown's a bigger guy. He's a bigger car. So I like to think of my own real-world canon where the Aventador is a little bigger than the Centenario. But So we'll see if I feel like transforming him for a comparison, just so you can see how much bigger um, the robot is, because the car's... The cars are very similar in size. Uh, if I put them like this and I tip them up, you can barely see lockdown around him, except for the front and the back is slightly bigger. So it's really impressive the differences in robot mode. And part of that is because he has the hollowness in here to make the seats and the doors and stuff. He does not, he is chock full completely to the brim chock full of robot stuff which is how they got away with that so put him back off to the side um and uh we'll go ahead uh one last thing i want to note about vehicle mode is that the tires are rubber and they they can become dislodged if you have it in your pocket or a bag or something like that or even if you just turn it too hard on a surface the tires can can become dislodged and you just gotta bump them back into place all right so that out of the way we'll go ahead and get into transformation to get him into his robot mode okay to start off with transformation i'm just gonna right away make my life easier by raising this up a little bit and we're gonna start by opening his doors which just pop out there's a little kind of a, a slot there and there's a bump here if i can get it to focus there we go there's a bump that that goes over and then his door is on a little slider i've had to take a screwdriver to the screws in his door just to kind of tighten that up several times because as you you know you're messing with it it'll loosen up um you don't have to bump it out this far you literally just have to get it so that it's up we'll go ahead and fold the seat down now because the seats fold down uh one is a feature i guess and two as a transformation if you're gonna have this displayed with her actually being kidnapped you could fold the seat down so she can't try and drive and she'll just be stuck in this one all right we got the way the doors up the feet down we're gonna go ahead and unclip well let's see first we'll we'll unclip these little silver hooks get them off to the side uh, one came unclipped earlier and then we'll untab these sections there is a slot here and a big old tab here and we'll pull those down like so and then I'm, I'm actually gonna pull the doors forward and straighten them back out into their car configuration for now so that way they're not flopping to bits and getting in my way we'll come back down here rotate these panels in you can do this before or after you form up the arm, but I th I like doing it this way because then there's nothing is running into each other. And then the wrist area is going to unplug from here. And real quick, I'll go ahead and I'll rotate his hands into the correct orientation. And I'll put all of this back together for a second. Now it's been a while since I have transformed the hands the quote unquote correct way. But if I recall, having them in here like this uh, caused some stuff to not want to sit right. 
doesn't look like it's doing too bad now. Let me see what happens if I close it all up. It could just be something that, uh, because I've played with it so many times, it's gotten loose enough that it doesn't matter what orientation that's in, but it could also be that I need to have it all closed up. So we'll close this all back up and see what it looks like. Yeah, see, this is popped out again. That might just be loose on mine, though. Now, they were really hard to get out, but, uh, okay, it's not really having any effect but before it would, well, there is some, so I thickened this tab on accident glue and his, getting the glue in his knee to, to uh, tighten it. So that could also be holding it together. So now I don't have to rotate his wrist down like that if I don't want to, I guess. But if you're having issues or this isn't staying together quite right, try rotating his wrist so that the orange is facing down. So we'll get this back to where we had it before I went into that little spiel. Oh, got to untab these. Get his arms out. <clears throat> Get his seats down. Fold these up. All right, so we're about in the same place. The only thing I've done extra is that I've rotated his his arms out of there. Um, there's a hole in his wrist that pegs into here, and then this little hook tab goes around and, and tabs into there. And then you can uh, rock these forward on the double hinges and they'll tab in. There is a slot here and a tab. I want to say, or is it the other way? Okay, there's a tab here, right here, that's going to go into that slot. All right. And then we'll go ahead and get the doors out to the side again. And then once I get those arms done, I'll start working on stuff down here. <coughs> Excuse me. We'll go ahead and uh, fold these out. There's just a little tab that'll go into a little slot right here. Um, it's mostly held in place by the doors being in place, though. So I'll fold those forward and let it kind of fall down. And then you're going to grab it right here and pull it back. And it slides back to reveal this hinge. Once it slid back, you can get your finger up in here and push on this part, which will help you pop out this back panel here. So we want to get that out like that. Then we're going to come up to the front, loosen up the sides of his bumper. And when we pull this away, it'll allow us to fold this down. We'll be able to rotate this. Uh, and then there's going to be a little, uh, catch there's two little slots down in there just below this pin I don't know if you can see them let me turn on my flashlight so there's two little slots right down in there you can see the light catching inside of them and that's where these little tab hooks are gonna go so you're gonna fold this down and slot that in and tab it in and that's why there's a scrape on the roof then having done that we can fold these out to the side more these uh structures that had the little piece fold away are going to rotate back you're going to tuck the piece under here again rotate it back and just tuck it in and then you've got two tabs that are going to go into these two slots here form up his back and then you can just rotate these back for now and then we'll go ahead and take his arms and they're on a double hinge. So you're going to fold it down on the double hinge and I fold them out to the side. His head is also on a double hinge. So we're going to rotate that up now and then we'll get his chest down all the way forward. We'll fold these down and kind of angle them back on the double hinges for a second. So that way we can start pushing his chest together and then fold them back forward on those double hinges and everything's going to sit nicely. And we're just going to leave that like that for now. And we're going to focus on his legs. Oh, I can turn my flashlight off now. For his legs, we'll go ahead and disconnect this back piece. You have two posts on 
each on either side that'll go into ports on what will be part of his feet. We'll lift the bumper or the spoiler up, rotate these exhausts around, and then push it up until it sits here for now. We're going to unclip these uh, panels from what will be the rest of his legs. There's a tab here and a tab here that uh, slots will, on the underside of this will go into. Fold his legs out. Then we're going to fold this uh, hinge, rotate it down, spin the whole thing around, and kind of set it in place. We'll try and get that better on this side. So there is the groove it's going to sit in. We rotate this down, fold it down on that hinge, rotate it until the orange is facing the front of the leg, and then just clip that into place. Now that we've done that, we can go ahead and separate the legs and fold the torso back. And this is all going to just clip together here because this, oh, you can't see any of that, the legs in the way. Hold on, let me rotate the leg down on this side and redo that for you guys. I apologize. I am looking around my camera and not at it sometimes. So what's going to happen here if it'll stop focusing on the foot is that this back part of the spoiler is going to end up clipped up under here so you're going to rotate the torso up and just kind of clip that into place there and it holds that together pretty well all right now i'll just rotate the leg back to the way it was so that way we can work on the legs from here so this is this is how our legs were they were tabbed together and like i said i think it's just that this ended up thickened up because these usually don't hold together this well after you've gotten this far so i think i i thickened those up but what we're going to do on each leg is disconnect the tail light and fold it away we're going to rotate this tire section around and then we're going to split it here at this seam um, this tire is going to rest in this and this is just going to stay flat for now we'll pull the leg apart rotate this gray uh, feature structure out we're going to rotate it so that way the gray feature is in the same orientation as the uh, die cast hinge fold the leg down and there's a tab and a slot that's going to come together and then this tail light is on a spring so what we're going to do is we're going to spring it in and rotate this all down like so and then on the inside of the leg, there's a die cast metal tab that's going to go into a slot on his foot. And that's one leg complete. We'll go ahead and do that with the other leg. So we're going to disconnect the heel, rotate the tire assembly around, fold the part with the tire, which is the larger half, <coughs> excuse me, over so it sits in this groove. We'll dislodge this structure. We're going to make, uh, you can rotate this all into place and then rotate the leg but it's easier if you just rotate the leg now because i'll show you with this one if we keep it this way and we get it all pegged together instead of just being able to rotate it that way you're gonna have to rotate it all the way around because this is gonna bump into the back of the knee so get it together push this in on its spring fold it into place and tab it in and there you've got a second leg all done we're going to fold his butt plate up, rotate at the waist, and we pretty much just have to sort out his arms. So uh, during transformation, uh, this is hard to push in, but now that we've got everything done in the torso, we can. there's a little tab here, but it's mostly just going to be friction. You're just going to squeeze that, shut that area all together, and we'll raise up. So we can do his upper body. Now you can do whatever you want with these wings. You can leave it like this. You can rotate them around like this. What I like to do, especially, I used to do this, uh, something similar even when the uh, side view mirrors were on. So you can do this too. As I'll rotate them around and I'll take the window and I'll stick it up in between this and this and just squeeze that on the slider until it sits in place and it holds them in place they're not flopping around and it looks pretty okay to me as a position for the wings to be so we're going to go ahead and do that on this side 
get that up in there there now his wings are on his back and they're hanging down because in the in the movie his kind of hang down and bumblebees are of course flared up so they're kind of opposites with their wings um so that's his wings and then if uh you had them rotated uh the way i did in the beginning of the video if your back ends popping apart and you want to try this out his hands are going to look like this if you have them just rotated the correct way uh, from the beginning his hands are going to look like this one but you'll just straighten his arm out and rotate it at the bicep uh, rotate the wrist if you need to and just kind of do whatever you want with his hands um, i found that going into car mode straighten his thumb out and then fold the fingers around it it's the best orientation but for robot mode i like a fist so I'll actually fold it down and just squeeze it until this uh, knuckle is almost in a triangular position and then I'll just fold again fold the thumb down over that so go ahead and make him a fist on both sides so there he's got a fist and that is Lahire in his robot mode um, go ahead and take a look at his details now raise up the camera a little bit uh, he's got a lot of nice paint on his face those eyes are painted and they just they light up almost when you've got enough light on them They're, they are very full of life he's got his bike helmet looking head here with the orange picked out on the face you've got silver picked out again I added that Autobot symbol onto him um, molded detail in the back of the head uh there's some mine work and stuff and then there's the space for the hinge but no paint um this whole business here i want to say is painted and then i think these hinges here are die cast so you got die cast hinges and i i can't tell if they painted a little silver onto them too um so that's all painted silver You've got the orange paint on the inside, and I know it's paint because it's scuffing on that side a little bit. You've got orange and silvers and gunmetals on the outside of there. Coming down the chest, all the paint slash clear plastic from the, the uh, vehicles coming through. You've got some black painted tubes on here. Either that or the it's molded in black and the rest of it is painted gunmetal. But I'm thinking that maybe it's painted gunmetal and then painted black because the tubes are only black on the front. It's hard to tell these orange paces have a gunmetal paint in them you've got orange paint here none of the orange paint touches any of the orange plastic so the color uh, mismatch is, is a lot easier to uh, forgive it's a lot more obvious when you stare at it plus the camera makes it more obvious but in person it's not that obvious that the plastic and paint isn't the same uh, gunmetal on the waist You've got the orange details on the sides of the car that aren't stickers like that TF Evo or whatever it was. Um, the only thing I would have liked is for them to have painted this part of the knee orange or black to match this tab so that way it didn't look like it was sticking out so much. I could, I could live with this knee. This is the only part I don't care for about his look. And it's just that those are orange, and if they just painted them black, I could paint them black if I felt like it. Then I'd like it a lot better. Silver and gunmetal on the shins. And then you've got orange and silver and maybe black painted on the foot. It's hard to tell what's painted and molded. You've got that die cast piece there. Uh, going up the side of the leg, more orange and silver and black. You've got the wheels in the proper position on both the legs and the arms with more orange details and then coming up the back he's got a very clean back with some uh, silver gun metally paints his butt plate is silver and then a lot of this is just the colors of the plastic but they're clean and clean is pretty much the name of the game on the back as long as it's not a detail that was paint like the MPM Optimus where the front of his arm had the flames painted and the back of the same part of the arm just was barren because they didn't feel like painting it. This is not that. And then the back of his arms have nice detail and these are actually the backs of the seats on his arm. So it's pretty cool that the arm looks so cohesive and it's made up of seats in that area. But that's him. <coughs> we'll take a look at articulation. 
and then accessories. So his head is on that double hinge. So you can use that to have him look up. You can get them looking down. Um, the hinge itself is on a swivel, so we can look left and right, but that means that there's no tilt. These shoulder pieces will flare out if you need them to for any reason, just for the look, or, and I couldn't tell you, but it's there, so that's nice. You've got a uh, hinge here at the shoulder to get you out 90 degrees, and then you've got the 360 degree rotation he's got the bicep swivel for the transformation it's nice and tight his elbows are a little loose after transforming so many times but they are double jointed and if you work with it um you can get get out of here fly you can get some nice stuff out of that he's got the wrist rotation that i use in the transformation and he also has uh for transformation the wrist will rock in and out You've got the three fingers on base pin and knuckle with the pointer finger separate. And then you've got the thumb with one hinge and then it's connected by a ball point so you can do, excuse me, what you want with that. I'm just gonna leave this open for now because I'll put a weapon in that hand. He does not have an ab crunch per se. Well, I guess he does. You can rotate this forward and it'll work as an ab crunch. Uh, but the swivel is above that, so I'm not sure how useful that's going to be. Well, that doesn't actually look that bad. It almost looks like he's exercising. So you got the ab crunch. You've got the swivel for the transformation that goes full 360. Um, for the legs, nothing's going to get in their way back except the butt plate. So you kind of got to spread it just a little to get it all the way back. You can get it all the way forward. Uh, this is going to angle it out kind of like the Dragoon figure where it's not going to go forward without bumping into that. Um, it'll go pretty far out to the side. If you rotate the leg a little bit, you can get the full outward mov movement. Um, you've got a thigh swivel here, and then you've also got a knee swivel here for the transformation, which was really loose, but I just tightened that up, so now it's, it's tighter, and I tightened this one up too, so they're tighter. You've got a bend at the knee. It is a single bend that gets you more than 90 degrees. And then you've got the foot. Uh, you could kind, you've got a little toe tilt here. And if you dis disconnected this, you could kind of do a, a forward tilt. There's no backwards, but there is a, you know, as much of a rocker as you're basically going to get without a double hinge. So the articulation on this guy is pretty good, I think. It's pretty good. So we'll go ahead and show off some of his, his accessories now. You have him come in with his little figurine lady. Um, so we could set her in his hand if we wanted to. Uh, I wish that would be great because her hands look like they're molded for it, but she should have came with a broom so she could smack him. He comes with two of the same gun. Um, and basically what they did was they just took his stop the time gun and they molded it without the stop the time element. So you've got this accessory, which comes on one of them in the box but i'm just showing you that you can plug it onto either of them because they look the same and then you've got a blast effect and i believe this is not compatible with siege in any way uh, i haven't tried because i believe i saw it on a review that it wasn't so i didn't bother and he comes with a clip very small clip and if you've seen the movie you know that this blast effect doesn't look anything like it does when he shoots his time gun so as far as i'm concerned they just decided to throw in an extra version of his gun where they took the time thing off and then gave you a magazine and a clip so that way he just has kind of a regular uh, smg like a a cybertronian mp5 or something and then on the other gun with you he doesn't have the clip because it's not accurate he doesn't have the flash because it's not accurate but he has the time piece on it without a, a blast effect because that that does look like his gun so they found a way to take this gun with the same base and make a machine gun out of it for you to have now for the guns they're gonna plug into this little tab here and when you transform them they molded a groove in his palm so the tab can go in there for transformation which is kind of nice and to start putting his gun in his hand i like to start out from my fist position and rotate it on this lowest knuckle 
and then we'll tab the gun in. This is going to be a little tricky because I'm trying to make sure you can see the tab go in there. And then the thumb's kind of getting in the way, so we'll rotate the thumb down and get everything closed. It's a tight area with a lot of stuff, so it can get a little uh, tricky to get that in there. But there, he's got his gun. And like I said, his, his elbow is a little loose on that back joint, but the front joint isn't so loose. So bend the front joint up and the back joint can just do what it wants because the front joints get in it all the way up. We'll get them kind of posed here. And then if you wanted, you could have them dual wield by giving them this gun. And then there's the slot that it plugged into. Uh, we'll take a look at the gun. Uh, there's nothing painted on the gun at all except for the blue on the time clip as I'm gonna call it but there's lots of molded details and uh, since this looks more like a traditional machine gun there isn't gonna be a whole lot of color on that it's just gonna kind of be black with a clip and a, a blast effect so I'm not gonna complain too much um, we'll go ahead and get him back here uh, I'm going to have to raise this up more because I know I'm going to have bigger guys in here. And we'll take a look at size comparison part two. Well, actually, I'm going to angle this down for now. So that way we can get our Rubik's Cube in because we don't want to leave him out. There's our Rubik's Cube next to a higher. We've got our Gormagala statue. We have our Volkswagen as a robot, and he's actually a little shorter, uh, so he gets he gets pretty tall because uh, this as a Volkswagen is about the same size as the other one. So he was a taller kind of squatter vehicle, and he was a longer, slimmer vehicle. So he's still kind of bulky, and he's just lanky and, and thin. We'll put him off to the side. Uh, I also just took any Masterpiece Movie car bots that were in Robot in their packaging. So here he is with MPM Jazz. This is the knockoff version of Jazz. And so I did put an Autobot symbol down here where it wasn't all the toys because I didn't see one on the CGI model. Here he is with Jazz. Jazz, don't fall. You fell over. Just stand. Okay, you can lay down. Here he is with his best friend, Bumblebee. This is the uh, 2007 Masterpiece movie version. This is the knockoff. Of course, I believe I've said that before. So it's not exactly the same, but there's the best buds. Bumblebee and Hot Rod. Here's where I'm going to have to start raising things up. Maybe not that far. We'll see if this works. Here he is with the Black Apple oversized upgraded version of the Movie 7 Prime. Okay, yeah, that's that's definitely not going to work. We're going to have to raise this up and angle it down. There he is with that Prime. Scoot him back a little bit just so you can see. Because I think this Prime scales pretty good with the Bumblebee. So I think this is about as big as Prime would be to Hot Rod. Because this Prime retains his height um, across all the variants of him. They're all 28 feet. So uh, this looks pretty good. Uh, if you wanted a Knight Prime to go with him, you'd have to find something this tall. Which as far as I know, there isn't one as tall as this yet. And then the only other character I have from the last night that's a masterpiece is my uh, Dragoon knockoff. He's a little shorter, like I showed in my comparison of Dragoon. He's about half a head shorter, which actually makes him pair up pretty good with this Lahire and that Optimus I showed previously. There he is with his movie mate, Dragoon. And then 
for one final comparison, I decided since he's so fun and simple to transform for a masterpiece, um, I decided to go ahead and transform uh, Lockdown, aka Peru Kill, so that way you can just see how much bigger he is than Lahire. Um, they're very similar sized cars, but because of how much robot they back into his vehicle mode versus him having some open space for the, the door gimmick and stuff, he only comes up to like the bottom of his chest in robot mode. So you can see very similar sized cars with cars that similar in size, you'd think he'd only be like a head taller, but they the difference is pretty significant. So we'll go ahead and put him back off to the side, bring him into the center. Uh, Final thoughts wise, this is probably one of the best Masterpiece movie figures I own. Um, I would like to say that it's probably my favorite car bot, uh, except maybe Transcraft. Uh, yeah, Transcraft beats it out. Um, my, brother prefers, my brother prefers Peru Kill because he says that the Lahire transformation isn't as smooth um, and it is a little more disjointed i think that it does have more steps yes but the way i transform it i basically do 90 percent of the upper body then i do the legs and then i do finishing touches which um with peruco when i transform it i start with the legs and then i get the body formed and then i'll finish the legs and then i'll do the arms and the chest uh so i think they're pretty similar there uh as far as you know it not being straightforward like the mpm bumblebee like thu said it's literally two halves lashed together with a stick sorry someone has invaded my filming area so we'll let them do their thing and then we'll continue Alrighty. Continue on with final, final thoughts. Yeah, with that Bumblebee, you pretty much can just disconnect the legs from the rear of the car and never touch them again until the entire body's done. With these, this guy in the Pro Kill, it's a little more uh, give and take as far as uh, the transformation goes, and I think they're about even there, but my brother would disagree. Uh, the accessories... The only thing I can fold it for accessory wise is other than the figurine, which is my least favorite accessory. Nothing fits in vehicle mode, nothing stores. I do not like it when there's no vehicle mode storage. There isn't even a hole in a tab for you to plug it into the roof. I would have appreciated that more just because then I could put it on the shelf and have the gun on it without it just sitting loose. Uh, if I wanted to, like with Peru kill here in vehicle mode his gun can plug into the roof of the vehicle um, with the MPM bumblebee his gun stores under the vehicle seamless uh, the dragoon stores stuff that Optimus Prime stores the weapon his guns and swords seamlessly in vehicle mode um, the jazz his gun and in, in his torso rip spine effect part will plug into the gun and the gun will clip on the spoiler. So at least there's something there. But as far as a, uh, a negative goes, that's just a nitpicky one that is my personal preference. And I usually just leave the guns in the box because of it. So is it going to hurt the figure? No. Uh, I don't really use guns on my figures that often anyway. Even though he does look pretty cool in this pose. Uh, mm, let's see. I asked a couple of people what they'd like to see in uh, my personal life for a masterpiece for Thanksgiving. Next masterpiece review is going to be on Christmas-ish, uh, so I'm going to be asking them again, but if you want to see a masterpiece that you've seen in my reviews or that I've said I've had, go ahead and comment that, um, and we'll take a vote and we'll see what the Christmas masterpiece ends up being. Um, if you like the video, go ahead and give it a like, uh, ring the notification bell if you want to be updated when I post things. Um, I do link my Twitter in my videos, and I do try to post a photo on my Instagram that posts to my Twitter the day before a review is coming out. Um, subscribe to my channel if you haven't and would like to. Uh, I also am doing a Pokemon Platinum playthrough, uh, uh, so if you're not interested in Pokemon, 
Uh, they're not going to be really clashing with my transformer schedule because I'm putting them up on days that uh, are not transformers. Most of anyone watching should have figured that out by now because I will, this is being filmed at least two weeks in advance. But uh, just so you know, the Platinum reviews aren't taking over transformer time. There's still going to be reviews on Mondays and Fridays minimum and Wednesdays if the urge strikes and then masterpieces for holidays um i think that's about it go ahead and check out my playlist go ahead and check out my pokemon playthrough if you're interested um you can follow me on twitter if you want to get uh see who's coming out the next day like i said i will post and i'll go ahead and wish any of you who are celebrating it a happy thanksgiving and I wish my uh, Canadian friend Waffles a happy late Thanksgiving, because if TV shows have told me accurately, your Thanksgiving was in October. So, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. I will see you next.